Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the continuation of my Genshin Impact playthrough session. We are picking up where we had to unfortunately leave off yesterday with finishing off, hopefully, the rest of the Sumeru Archon Quest interlude chapter featuring the Wanderer. We just basically went through a little bit of a history lesson, which is kind of cool of how they're using Soul to take glimpses into the past regarding the Wanderer's history as a Kabuki Mono and his relationship with... Inazuma and Niwa, who is the character that was originally show uh, or originally mentioned during the Iridori Festival, and just kind of going into Scaramouche's history during his time spent throughout Inazuma and Tatarasuna. And uh, we found out the revelation that Datore was actually putting in work hundreds of years ago as the second ranked Fatui Harbinger on behalf of Piero to instill the first level of like national crisis to like their nation's infrastructure with the mikage furnace and everything else that happened there to where by the time we got there the place was in like turmoil he also kind of influenced scaramouche to become the person that he was through killing niwa and kind of misdirecting scaramouche to interpret his second betrayal as his friend betraying him it's really cool to see these revelations what's currently happened is that he's removed himself as baladir and kabuki moto from ermansoul as a way of trying to rewrite his history but it seems like history like there's like an alternate fixed timeline now where the beats along the path are different but the end goal is always the same niwa no longer died by the hand of dotore he died a hero protecting people from the mikage furnace incident of tatarasuna so the thing that he tried to do from ermansoul i think kind of backfired i feel like he's gonna have to live with that past he's not gonna be able to change it which basically means there is no time timeline in the history of Genshin where La Signora doesn't die. Sorry that I had to make that the butt of the joke, but it is what it is. Niwa will always die no matter what. La Signora will always die no matter what. Unfortunately, the same will be said for Guizhong and Rue and all of the characters that we know and love so far within the world of Teyvat. We're not done yet. I still don't know how this Archon quest is going to end, so we're going to pick up and continue on. However, there are two things that I just wanted to showcase. One is like a bit of merch that I wanted to showcase, and one is a little bit of a, an appreciation piece that I just got in the mail that I kind of wanted to, to show off. So I have made a lot of bad decisions in my life. That's probably relatable. Some of you guys are like my relatable streamer. For better or for worse, it's bad enough that I'm playing a gacha game where I want to get every character in the game. And then what happens is they release Funko Pops. And um, I'm doing real live gacha now. <laughs> So I already collected the characters in the game and I'm like, you know what would be a better decision, a better financial decision is uh, let's collect Aether again because he's my playable character. Guys, I found her. I can finally stop playing this fucking game. I actually hate Genshin Impact, by the way. I can't stand this fucking game. I'm in too deep. I wanted to stop, but I'm like, I have to find my twin. I can't stop until I find my twin. And then fucking Funko Pop was like, I got you, fam. Here you go. And now I can finally stop playing Genshin Impact. That's all I wanted to say. I'm actually quitting the game today, dropping it like a bad habit. If any of you guys want my account, the bidding will start at $50,000. Hit me up on Cash App and we can talk business. And uh, secondly, I got this. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. So I actually ordered this, I think, la like a month or so ago. I'm going to read off here before I actually show you what it is. This is a certificate of authenticity. This certificate guarantees the authenticity of the signature on the memorabilia which accompanies this document. This item has been personally signed by a celebrity listed on this document and is genuine. The authenticity of the signature is unconditionally guaranteed by Smith. Smashnet.inc. And the signatures in question, Christina Costello and Kelly Baskin. If you know who those people are, you know what I'm about to show you. I got a signed signature from one of my favorite characters, VAs of Kali and Amber. Signed to Murder of Birds. And she put my name in quotes, actually, because she like she follows me on Twitter. So to Murder of Birds, Arnold, Christina Costello. And I'm going to frame this as soon as possible. And I'm going to put it right here by the side of my streaming setup. So whenever I go live, I'll be able to see these wholesome two that I 
prage that Hoyoverse will bring them back for Ludi Harpastum whenever they remember that's supposed to be something that happens in Mondstadt in the future. But wanted to show it off to you guys. I opened it for the first time now. This is the Certificate of Authenticity. And uh, yeah. Oh, actually, I almost didn't notice, but Kelly also signed it here, right here. She says, Outrider Amber, reporting for duty. Kelly Baskin, Amber. Yo, so I got a signature from both of them. Poggers. I rarely like get merch or any stuff like that, but especially if it's from like a community person, someone that actually works on the game. I triple crown Kali on day one, by the way, if you guys didn't know. Loved her from the manga. I'm excited for you guys to see my manga reaction to her when I read the manga for the first time when that goes up on YouTube. It's not uploaded to YouTube at the time of this recording. Actually, by the time this goes to YouTube, that will have long been uploaded. But at the time of me recording right now, I'm actually about to start editing the manga. So yeah, I wanted I wanted it to be Kali of all characters. I also got the statue of Her Excellency, the almighty Narukami Agoshi god of thunder but it hasn't like it's not gonna arrive until next year so when that shows up i'm definitely gonna peep that out and i'll showcase that to y'all as well i'm gonna put it outside of my house just like i have it in my serenity pod. all right here we go let's get back into it hey it's them oh oh my god are their research papers different akaba sawara you're still here are you still talking about the essay gonna write an essay that's what i say Indeed we are. If you have a moment, we'd love for you to join us once more. Okay, am I gonna have to reread their shit? We have time. What do you want to talk to us about? It's the same topic we discussed last time. Obviously. I actually might skim through this if I actually have to read both of theirs for any discrepancies in the original essay. Still looking for more info about Tatara Suna, huh? Hmm, should we join them? Perfect, these two have researched Tatara Suna's past. Let's see what they have to say. Unfortunately, we haven't made any real progress. The article that you let me read last time was great. Can I read it again? Huh? Oh, uh, of course. Oh, God, Aether, why would you do this to me? Oh, sir. Is this actually different? Like, how different is this? Like, do I really have to fucking re- Okay, wait, wait, wait. So, whoa, whoa, okay, so this is different, right? Okay, I'm just gonna read the highlighted part because I already read it initially. Don't come for me, all right? A great many of these rumors revolved around the yokai who are so very characteristic of Inazuma's folk histories. A small portion, however, repeatedly mentioned the word- Oh, so this is the kabuki mono moment, but now it's been replaced with outsider. A small portion, however, repeatedly mentions the word outsider uh it should be known that the apparent of such a character who is suspected to be based on a real person and is a very curious case this fact drew the attention of the researcher to delve further and eventually the following piece of information came to light a foreign mechanic once visited to tarasuna reportedly the reason for his immigration was to exchange knowledge and forge ties with the locals however the mechanic seemed to behave suspiciously often wandering around essential and restricted areas and if someone tried to turn him away he would always earn incomprehensible mumbles from his lips the mechanic often stared into the furnace seemingly to check on its condition unsettlingly he also spent a substantial amount of time watching the local residents judging from the era it is not uncommon to see cross-cultural exchanges of technical knowledge in places such as tatarasuna after traveling across the tides foreign experts being welcome in the region are likely not unreasonable either yet calamity came not long after this exchange of knowledge which hints at high potential of causation between these events however some current residents believe that these assumptions were merely the result of the forebearers overactive imagination attempting to theorize how things actually unfolded and then the mechanic long have i delved through many texts and documents but i was ultimately unable to decipher even a specter of a clue as to his background still mentions of the mechanic grew scarcer in the aftermath of the tatarasuna incident i speculate that instead of the mechanic possibly being a figure woven from overripe imagination he actually did exist and perhaps even had a hand in the event that took place in Tatarasuna. so dotore's involvement was still accurate everything played out but the death of niwa was different i presume you'll want to read mine as well uh yeah sure why not sir damn okay so this is the discrepancy here miyazaki hit his grin upon hearing this niwa released the lizard from his hand onto katsuragi's palm but just as the words were to be exchanged someone came walking by their footsteps steady and confident the head that appeared by the door was one from abroad the newcomer placed some lunch boxes to one side nodded and made his leave katsuragi called out to him sir what about your meal are you not hungry the man laughed 
laughed upon hearing Katsuragi's words. I already ate. I hope that you, my lord, may also find time to sate your hunger soon. You are our guest, sir. To see you help in these trifling matters fills me with embarrassment, Niwa said with sincerity. The man smiled as if it was no matter. Then with a nod, he departed. All right, so that's the first discrepancy. Second, like a falling spear, the black cloud reached the bottom of the boat and it was joined with the breathness of direction. Like a charging beast, they plunged into the shoreline, scant steps away. The mechanic laughed, slowly approaching the grand wreck. Not but half an arm was left of the one who had cried out for help and with a plop, it landed at the mechanic's feet. Okay, so this is basically replacing Kabuki Mono, who crouched to better study the object stained against the urge to take a bite yet he did not for the dark cloud swirling down had already picked the remnants of the ship clean damn dotori had a field day with this rewrite my god then a second ship was sent followed by a third and a fourth each who left to seek salvation did so under a foul skies and bleak fortunes reason dictated that they should not have risked anyone else but the situation to tarasuna was severe they needed to gain aid from inazuma should it cost them even more lives Okay. The contents has changed. Another effect of tampering with the information in Ermansul. The balladeer said he'd erased two of his names. If he really succeeded, it must have taken all of his might, but still. Well, what do you think? Uh, it's a masterpiece, sure. Hey, Traveler, remember how last time Akaba was saying how he wished he could gather more information about all this? <clears throat> well, we just got back from Inazuma. So how about we tell them what we learned? Sure. Oh, shoot. Paimon's actually putting her brain matter together. What did you find out? Something big? It's a long story. Basically, yeah. we have some friends in Inazuma, and... <laughs> and that's how I saved Inazuma. <laughs> wow. So many new details. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Well, well. So it all comes down to one man's desire for revenge. Mm -mm. Huh. You heard this from a member of the Amanoma clan, you say? I mean... And I guess it must be true. Yeah, it is true, technically. The victors write the history books. Ugh. So there's no ghost story here after all. Well, not yet. That event's in a couple of days. This new information actually lends further credence to my hypothesis. Evidently, swordsmiths were seen as having an incredibly prestigious role in society those days, to the extent that harming them was conceived of, at least by the perpetrator, as a way of exacting revenge against those in power. That's what he basically did. He, like, attacked the riding Goken in it. At the end of the day, it attacked the heart of the region. Yes, yes, okay, point taken, you were right. But that doesn't mean I can't carry on with my novel. And they're back at it. Yep. These guys are really into this. We've got some things to take care of. Bye for now. Oh, so sorry. Look at us, prattling on about our projects and ignoring you. Classic. <laughs> Thank you so much for the information. It's not like I'm the main character or anything. You're welcome. See ya. Keep us in the loop if you find out anything else. All right. Will do. Smell you later, nerd. The Kabuki Monos finale. The information you gathered left you with a heavy heart. You decided to return to the sanctuary of Suristhana and tell Nahida about everything you learned. Nahida, we're here. Traveler, Paimon. How have you been? Oh, God. Does she not remember him either? Ugh. Where to start? Oh, God. <laughs> Paimon hasn't had a moment's rest this whole time. That night, we ended up chatting and chatting until suddenly the sun was up. And then he decided he wanted to go to Inazuma. I want to investigate the situation with the balladeer. <laughs> What's that? The balladeer? Oh, my God. Hmm. This sounds like some kind of code name. So I guess that confirms that Venti and Zhongli won't remember Ruka Nevada either. Wow. Damn, I'm the only one that remembers him. You look troubled. Is there something you need to tell me? Even Nahida doesn't remember. Just like, dude, I look crazy, right? Paimon's like, a traveler, you're acting pretty sus. Just like last time, any changes to Irmasil affects her as well. The balladeer acted quickly. He finished erasing himself before Nahida could stop him. Wow, that's actually pretty smart. I'm the only one who still remembers the things that were erased. Once again, I am the record keeper. You are the witness. Those who come to remember will remember. Those who will come to witness will witness. Hey, what's wrong? Bruh. You look so upset. There are things that have happened that only I can remember. But she knows about Erminsel, so she'll probably be able to understand that Erminsel was tampered with. I have to tell you the truth. 
Is that a good idea? <laughs> Should we tell them things that have been forgotten? With a heavy heart, you piece back together the story that was broken and scattered across time. There was once one named the Balladeer created by the Electro Archon. He was a puppet who lived among men. After a series of events in Tatarasuna, the Balladeer, thinking that he had been thrice betrayed, left Inazuma to roam the world beyond. With no trust for humans and only loathing for the gods, he bore his grudge for years as he grew in strength, then returned to return Turned to Inazuma to take his revenge. He tried in vain to become a deity with a gnosis and ended up losing everything. Finally, he entered Ermansoul and learned the truth beyond his betrayal. Knowing now that his entire life was built on lies, he did the unthinkable in an attempt to reverse his tragic fate. <sighs> That's quite a story. You believe me, right? It actually happened. So, uh, this puppet known as the Balladeer erased himself from Ermansoul. Yeah. Hoping that he could change the past. That was pretty reckless of him because now he changed things kind of, but it's still the same thing. I would assume he still remembers it because he's the one who triggered that Ermansoul effect. But how was he even able to do that? As the Traveler said, he very nearly became Sumeru's deity. Yeah. Admittedly, I remember it a little differently. I don't recall finding anyone inside the machine after we defeated it. Damn. Nevertheless, it does make sense. Exactly. If someone were to successfully erase themselves from Ermansoul, the world would change to reflect the new reality. <coughs> we should also talk about Ruka Nevada, just kidding. <laughs> So, you believe this person really existed, and we just don't remember him because, well, because he literally changed the world? Yo, the threads of fate were his to reweave. Like, I actually think Ermansoul might be the connection to how we rewrite the world once we find out, once we have the memory of the world. Like, once we learn about everything, we can rewrite it in our image or however we want or the best case scenario to where whatever happens we can just make it so nothing bad happened or something yes theoretically speaking it is possible to do this but i'm struggling to imagine the kind of person who would dare go through with it mm. the traveler comes from a world beyond to that yeah that's why there's no information about him in Ermansoul. Yeah. And it also explains why any changes to Ermansoul wouldn't affect him. So if there's anyone in the world capable of retaining memories from a past that has been rewritten, mm -hmm. it's you. It's quite incredible when you think about it. Yeah, you can say that again. Paimon's having a hard time understanding this Balladeer guy's motivations. Why did he do it? I literally just recapped Balladeer's entire life story, and she's like, I still don't get it. I can only make inferences based on the information we've been given. As for what kind of person he was, only you remember that. I'm really not sure. We were enemies after all. I don't know his perspective on all this, so I can't say why he did something so extreme. The pain of losing his friend, maybe he thought he could bring him back. Did he want to reset everything or save someone? Or did he want to completely undo his existence? Everything can be set right. It's time to resolve this once and for all. Maybe that's all there is to it. I still remember the question he asked. He asked me specifically and my hesitation gave him his answer, yeah. I hesitated because I witnessed greater Lord Ruka Nevada erase her her own existence, but I can't tell Nahida that, that. To put it another way, I know why the Balladeer was so sure it would work, but I cannot tell them that. Something else worrying you? Something that you can't share? He chose such a radical option, and yet... It couldn't change the fate of the ones who had died. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And he didn't know that, so he was taking a gamble at that point. He wasn't really taking a gamble. I guess he assumed it would work because I guess he misinterpreted how Ermansoul actually works. Once the Balladeer realized he hadn't been betrayed after all, it must have completely changed his view of the people of Tatarasuna. Yeah. Now he saw them as friends again. He couldn't keep hating humans after that. And... If he thought there was a chance he could save his old friends... Yeah, that's unfortunate. It would be hard not to try. That's a huge Sasuke moment. The story makes sense. Every part of it. The Balladeer tried to achieve godhood with the Doctor's help. He was unsuccessful, but retained the power to connect with Ermansoul. That power then enabled him to change what was recorded in Ermansoul and erase himself, even though he didn't have much strength left. I wonder where he is. He erased his existence, but like, where is he now? Yeah, 
It does make sense, but... It still ended in tragedy for his friends. It just feels so hopeless. He gave everything to do this, but... Yeah. It seems like he got nothing in return. Yeah, he changed the world in many ways, yet the people still didn't get a second chance. Those fated to a tragic end cannot be saved. What exactly did he want to fight back against? The betrayal of his life? Or did he wish he'd never exist at all? Please wait a moment. I want to check something. She's going to peep the Erminsel? Hmm. Found it. This should be the one. Uh... What the fuck is that? Where the hell did you get that? What the hell? Yo, it's her charge attack. Yo, let's go. It turns out that I have a strange way of confirming everything he has told us. Okay, what is Is this information? What is it? A record from a personal collection. It was tucked away in a corner. Personal collect. Wait, what the hell? She's got a personal record of information? You should take a look. Surprisingly, the information is presented to you in a way that resembles a fairy tale. Is this a fairy tale? Wait. Who wrote it? Oh, I thought we were going to see it. I thought we were going to get like a cinematic. This matches everything I said. I authored this record myself. Huh? What the hell? You wrote a fairy tale that somehow has something to do with the balladeer? When combined with the traveler's narrative, it's clear that this story is an allegory. Oh. Everything in it is a symbol for something else. I see. Okay. It's like a story that is told to you, but it has a deeper meaning of truth. Hold on. So this record survived from the past past? Wait, hold on. Yo, that's a fucking hack. So you can preserve past knowledge if you tell it in a fictional way. So that means any fairy tale that exists in Tevat could be an allegory that preserves memories from a time before Ermansul rewrote or removed information. So like the Gnostic Battle Pass, that sounds like a fairy tale like from Venti, like the Gnostic Battle Pass cutscene, we see it every patch. That fairy tale's constantly thrown at you, which implies that that has to be an allegory that has like a deeper level of understanding that we don't know just yet. There's a ton of books in Genshin, I haven't read them yet. It just basically means that any story you hear could be true or could have nuggets of truth hidden within them. Yes. Any information about the Balladeer wow. or the Kabuki Mono and other records will have been changed. But I wrote this story in a way that means it was left intact. That is so fucking cool. Like, if someone thought to create an allegory of Ruka Devada, I guess that could be perceived as a fairy tale of knowing that she still existed in a way. Changing the information in Ermansoul changes to that. But Ermansoul can't change information that was well hidden in advance. <laughs> I guess I must have written this story as a backup before the balladeer entered her. Oh my god, she thought... Dude! She created this allegory in case he did... Dude, she's literally 10 head. She was like three steps ahead of him. She made the story in case he did that. So she... Oh my god. Nahida's literally goaded. That's incredible! What a great idea! So what she would have had to have done was she would have had to have made that allegory and bet on the traveler reminding her of these events to remember to check her like collection for something like that. So she like put a lot of faith in us right there because she knows that we're not from Tevat. So that means she would know that we would retain the information after the fact. So like she calculated all of this. That's wild. That's such good writing. And sending the traveler into Ermansoul with the balladeer mm -hmm. must have been a further precaution. Yeah. I knew he'd remember everything. <laughs> wow, that's so good. This story is abstract enough that it still resonates with the present information recorded in Ermansoul. That's so hype. But if we connect all the different pieces together, the true story that emerges is the one he told us. Yep. The now erased life of the balladeer. And that lines up with the story, which means we're telling the truth, which means it's true. Wait. There was once a lone monster draped in fox fur. The monster found a family of foxes, joined them, and they became friends. Oh my god. The monster lived with the family day and night, and everyone treated it as one of their own. Dude, we're actually getting to see the fairy tale too. This is so cool. Once in a while, the monster would take off its fox fur at night and lament to itself lament. as it gazed at its reflection in the water. <laughs> I am a monstrosity, yet they are too foolish to see it. I pity them. Aww. Oh, 
But the monster soon found this solace is adorable. when another came to live among the foxes who was not their kin. A kitten, carved from the wood of a Aww. white tree who had been abandoned by the humans. Gosh, this is so cute. I love how it's a bunch of foxes too, because the kitsune are the yokai of Inazuma. The kitten too wished to become a fox, but its tail was too slender mm. and it could not grow a coat of richly colored fur. Yet when the other foxes saw this, they spoke words of comfort to the kitten. Hmm. Even without a tail and fur like ours, Let's go. you are still one of us. Yo, these foxes are old just how this one's got like a walking stick. Gosh, where's Yai Miko? Oh! Furious at this happy resolution, the monster lit a fire on the mountain. The terrified animals panicked uh -oh. as the fire spread. The only way to extinguish the flames was to make a sacrifice. Was that like monster supposed to be Dotore? He's like, they'll never notice me in this camouflage. <laughs> Look at that, dude. That face is just like the side eye is ridiculous, dude. <laughs> a gray fox stood up and addressed the monster. It said, you are the cleverest among us. Among us? Surely you can help us find a way to solve this. <laughs> Come on, hoey over that dude. This is literally among us. <laughs> the monster smiled, led the fox toward the fire, mm. and murdered it. The gray fox's heart was turned into a beautiful drop of water, clear, spotless, His heart. and pure. Jesus. The monster gave the heart of water to the kitten, telling him, The foxes have decided. You are the one who must be sacrificed. That's wild, Take bro. This, quench the flames, and die for your fox kin. Dottore is like another level of evil, bro. <laughs> you killed his best friend and then gave him his heart and was like, Oh yeah, you gotta die too, by the way. Unlucky. The fire was extinguished, but the kitten lived. It left that side of the mountain and found a little bird who had a broken wing. Hmm. The two promised they would spend their whole lives together. A little boy. But the little bird did not have long left to live. It passed away soon after. <sighs> after burying the bird, the kitten left the mountain for good. What's probably adding insult to injury is that that whole Tatara Suna incident is probably what killed that kid from like the Tataragami spreading. Dotore is responsible for the second and third betrayal, basically. Wow, dude. Never again would it cherish a single creature nor a single blade of grass that stood on that mountain. The kitten spent the nights <laughs> wandering aimlessly, gnashing its teeth at the moon. I love this art style, though. This shit looks so cool. Also, I love Scaramouche as a cat. <laughs> oh, he just looks badass. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. Uh-oh. Paimon? If the world could only return to darkness, then it would finally be peaceful and content. How it wished to swallow the moon and devour the moonlight. And Paimon is perceived as like silver hair moon and like she's emergency food. So I feel like, I don't know, he's gonna eat Paimon. Oh my God. It become the new moon, the Sheesh! answer to everything. Look at this. Then no one will know that there were once birds, foxes and cats in God this world. Damn. And no one can know that they were different. This is such a sick Hello, shot, again. man. I love this. The eyes are so intense. Like, this is a great allegory. I'm just like replacing the, the, the story information with the real information, but the fact that you can do something like this to counteract Ermansel's effect is wild because now the beautiful thing about this chat is I haven't read any books in Genshin yet. So I'm not influenced by like anything that I read before this. So going into reading those books when I get to them, I'm going to take everything as an allegory. Like everything I read, I'm going to be like, where's the hidden message? Where's the truth in these words? Damn, this is so fucking cool. Genshin's lore is so great. I love it so much. We solved it! Holy moly. I remember now. This is not just the Balladeer story. Wait. It is his very own memories. I made a backup so that it would be preserved no matter what happened. Wait, wait, wait. did she just snap back to her like original memories of this? Because she says, I remember now, which is like, wait, so you remember your whole plan of this? To become a god, he was experimented on and modified countless times. 
It was brutal torture, and the only reason he was able to survive is that he was a puppet. This memory was extracted from him by the scholars. Presumably, they kept it to have something to defend themselves with. Mm. Creating a deity was just the first step. Some of them wanted to be able to control it. Uh, That's why okay. they backed up his memory for later use. I buried it deep inside one of my own dreams, and then hid it inside an allegorical story so that it wouldn't be altered. That's so cool. It's hard to believe that this person really existed, let alone that he tried to get rid of us on more than one occasion. Mm. Paimon has no memory of him at all. He completely vanished like a puff of smoke. The balladier agreed to help me look for information about the Descenders. Okay. And although he was unsuccessful, he still helped you. Before he vanished, he confirmed an important detail. Yep. That Conria was where your twin first came into this world. That's so interesting, though. Like, I always thought that she traveled the Seven and then settled in Conria. But for her to go there first and then travel and then the Calamity and then we try to leave is just like... I was not expecting that to be the turn of events. Does that mean Dane then traveled to the Seven? Because, like, they parted at some point. I don't know. I need more info on, like, Dane's timeline. We still don't know how the change to Ermin Soul will affect the senior ranks of the Fatui, but in all likelihood, they won't even remember their own harbinger. Does that mean Child got promoted? Is Child number 10 of the Fatui harbingers now then? Uh, I've never had this feeling before. It feels like life is as insignificant as a feather. It sounds like Paimon wouldn't like this guy a whole lot if he was still around, but still, Paimon doesn't like the way it all ended that much better. This is why wisdom alone cannot answer all our questions. For real. We look, we see, and we comprehend. But the question still troubles us. So the answer is not everything. People yearn to find the truth and then conquer the troubles they face. When you give someone the truth, you give them a chance to choose their own destiny. True! <laughs> Any truers? To others looking on, this may seem like a pointless endeavor, but for him, the chance to act on his desire to disappear must have meant a lot. Mm. Never forget that even when we walk beneath dark clouds along a road filled with suffering, the light of wisdom is always there, guiding us toward a better destination. And that is what you have been doing all along. Mm. Yeah, Mahir is right. Damn! Cheer up! I'm popping off. How about we go get something to eat? We can pick up this heavy conversation again later. <laughs> Paimon's like, cheer up. You want some McDonald's? Let's go get some McDonald's. Good idea. Paimon, why don't you take him out for a walk to clear his head? Damn, she's taking me out for a walk? Okay. You got it. Come on, traveler. You need to get out of your head for a while. You'll feel much better after taking a walk. That was some heavy lore dumps. Let's go get a snack for one of the stalls in the Grand Bazaar. That'll be sure to lift our spirits. It must be really tough being the only one who remembers all that. But Paimon's always here to help cheer you up. Heavy, dude. My god. We're here. What should we eat first? I have a nagging feeling like there's something I'm missing. Something important that I'm forgetting. Hey, are you going to answer or what? Sorry, I'm just... Give me a minute. I'm still processing. Yeah, that's a lot to take in, all right? Oh. <sighs> All right, whatever you want. Well, Paimon will be right here when you figured stuff out. Then we can get something to eat. Damn. <laughs> Aether's like, I need a minute, bro. He's like contemplating life right now. Come on, brain. Let's dig this out. It's got to be in there somewhere. It was something about Erminsel and deleting oneself. Greater Lord Ruka Nevada, Forbidden Knowledge, Nahida. What is it? Have you figured it all out? Paimon, you're being a little insufferable right now. Can you relax? Yes, that was it. Greater Lord Ruka Nevada, she said that no one can erase themselves from existence, not even her. Only other people can. So that means the balladeer is still out there somewhere, right? Otherwise, why would she need to create her own reincarnation in Lesser Lord Kusanali to do the deletion for her? There would be no point. Exactly. Uh, why'd you jump up all of a 
seven. No, I can't tell Paimon. She doesn't know about Greater Lord Ruka Nevada, and admittedly, she wouldn't understand it if I told her, if I spelled it out for her. But this is a crucially important detail. It's simply not possible for the Balladeer to completely erase his own existence, in which case the question is what happened to him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I completely forgot that little detail. Like, you can't erase yourself. So that's why I asked earlier, where is he? Excuse me, boss. There seems to be a small problem with the last bill. Look, here. Wait a minute. So he technically didn't erase himself. He still exists, but is his memory gone? Oh my god. And he doesn't have a vision yet. <laughs> oh shit. Hey, hey, wait. Oh no. Hmm? You mean me? Nani? No, not you. That kid. Didn't you see? Little rascal grabbed my last two fresh sunsetias and ran off. Damn, unlucky, dude. Look, if you're gonna help out here, you can't keep spacing out, okay? Holy shit. What is it? The work's too boring for you? Or has the big city got too many distractions? Wow, he's got a new life in uh, the freaking Grand Bazaar of all places. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Sorry, boss. I think you're right. Maybe it's the city. Mm. It's so exciting. It can be hard to focus. It's so interesting hearing him talk without a sarcastically condescending attitude. Damn, Aether's over there like, I see you. You're still alive. <laughs> Who's that guy? You know him or something? That guy is the balladeer. He's who? <laughs> who? <laughs> is this what everyone's going to do now? Whenever we refer to someone that's been wiped from Ermin, so we're going to pretend they never existed. Everyone does that. Whenever I say Greater Lord Ruka Nevada, chat just like Papega, like who? Who are you talking about? Like straight disrespecting my girl. You're a strange one, kiddo. You say you don't want any money for helping out here. And then when I actually give you some work to do, you keep letting yourself get distracted. I don't want to take advantage, so I'm happy to pay you what I'd pay anyone else. But if you keep acting like this, pretty soon I won't be able to afford to. Damn. No, no, please. I mean it. You don't need to pay me anything. Damn. I'm just so thankful you agreed to take on an outsider like me. You're welcome, I guess. But I got bigger things to worry about. Look, we're all out of Sunsetias. And I promised the lady down the street I'd deliver a fruit bowl this evening. Oh, go get some. And leave it to me. I'll find some more. Mm. Just a moment. I'll be right back. Stop. Damn. I'm gonna level with you, kiddo. I've never met a worker who said they didn't want a wage before. And at first, I got greedy. Couldn't believe my luck. <laughs> But I figured you'd start asking for something in return eventually. You find me useful. That's better than my previous life, and I appreciate it. You don't want money. You don't take days off. And in your free time, all I see you do is wander around, taking in the sights. Are you a, a drifter or something? That's right, I am. Uh, we can talk more about that later. First, let me get those fruits you needed. Sunsetius, was it? I'll be right back. Hey! What do we do now? Yeah, let's follow him. That's not weird or anything. Okay, stay out of sight. Don't let him see you. All right, let's see what this guy says. I see everything. <sighs> just an honest guy doing some honest business. All right, and I just yoinked him for his apples and radishes. Let's go. <laughs> Don't tell him, okay? I'm the god of this nation. I can do whatever the hell I want. Hello, sir. Yeah, this'll do. Even though you say he's the balladeer, what are we planning on doing? Stealing his sunsetias? Isn't that a bit too cruel? This should be enough. Hmm. Ah, guess I should wash them before I take them back. If I wasn't seeing this with my own eyes, I would never believe it. Huh? You two over there. Is there something I can help you with? Oh. Ha! <laughs> he spotted us! Cheese it! <laughs> You've been following me all the way from the city. I'd have to be blind not to notice. You're right, we were following you. Ah, <sighs> have we met before? Damn. No, we haven't met. But you know me? Yes. 
I have no recollection. Oh, man, that's so interesting. So, like, he removed the memory of Balladeer and Kabuki Mono, but his corporeal self still exists, unlike Ruka Nevada, whose consciousness was in Ermin's soul, and that had to be deleted. I wonder how we're going to get through to him for him to, like, remember himself if he ever does. It's complicated, but I do know you. Uh, are you absolutely sure? Yes, I know that had anywhere. Sorry, but I just can't take your word for it. I can prove it! You're a puppet! You're a puppet. A puppet? What makes you think that? Huh? Nani? <gasps> you were right. The look on his face. Mmm. Got him. I guess you do know me after all. That is not something I share with a lot of people. Mmm. Look, I'm just a wanderer. But seeing as you've gone through all this trouble to track me down, I'm sure whatever it is must be important. There's somewhere I want to take you. Okay. But please let me deliver these goods to my boss first. <laughs> He's doing an honest day's work. Like, sheesh. Are you really working for that guy? He said you don't want any more for it. Is that true? Yes. I ran into him out in the wilderness during a storm. And he let me take shelter in his cart. Mm. In return... I said I'd be his helper for a while. Oh my gosh, you know what this is reminding me of? He's looking off into the forest of the Aranara. And I remember, I think it was for 3.3, but they, like, Hoyoverse released this incredible, like, desktop artwork of the Wanderer with all of the Aranara in the forest. And I really want to see that. Oh my god, you know what I just realized? They gave him the same color scheme as Ara Riken, who also has, like, the wide hat looking, like, head. So, like, that'd be so cool if they, like, fucking paired up. Oh, my God. I want that to happen now. Let me take these back. Then I'll come with you. Okay? Yes. Then let's return to the city. Call your verse. Make it happen. All right? My people will call your people. Here you go, boss. I'll leave them right here. Oh, you really went and picked some more. Hmm. Who are these two? The main characters, sir. Something's come up, and they need to borrow me. Sorry, boss. Hmm. I'm afraid I'll be away from the stall for a while. <sighs> Dude, this is so cool. I was just about to pay you anyway. <laughs> Go wherever you want, kid. Don't waste your time here. What? Get out of here, all right? I don't want you. I get it, okay? You just wanted to help me out, to thank me for giving you shelter from the rain that day. Even then, I don't understand why you're so adamant that you don't want any pay for it. But look, it was pouring down, and there you were, sauntering along without a care in the world. <laughs> like you had nowhere to be, and didn't even care that it was raining. Imagine you were me for a second. It's a little weird, right? Why is this guy traveling during a rainstorm if he's not trying to get somewhere? True. And why is he taking a shortcut through the open country... If he's not even in a hurry. Man's out here just like, you know, wandering aimlessly, it seems. Uh... But anyway, taking you in didn't put me out even slightly. You don't owe me a thing for it. Certainly not all this. Your time is valuable. You know, you should go live your life. But I don't... What a real one. But I don't have a life, sir. No, you're right. Then I suppose this is where we say goodbye. Thank you again for taking me into the city. Don't mention it, kiddo. I've run into all kinds of characters over the years. I just hope you find your path. All right, done. Thanks for waiting for me. We can go now. First betrayal of the Wanderer, I got fired thanks to the Traveler. No job, no home, no memory, no bitches. <laughs> Someone in chat is popping off right now. Nahida! Nahida! Yo, we found him. What's wrong? What the heck? Oh, is that like the Akasha like system? I'm like, what the hell? She's got a freaking gaming setup. Huh? Are you? Hello. I do apologize for the sudden intrusion. Uh, hello, I'm the god of this region. We found this guy in the street, but he doesn't seem to remember anything. <laughs> so, yeah, quite an eventful life. Yeah, Nahida's on that hacker man's. <laughs> you tell Lester Lord Kusanali what happened in the Grand Bazaar. You say that you are trekking across to that to train yourself. Mm. Mm. Many other Inazumans who describe themselves in this way call themselves Shugenja. Shugenja? Why do you refer to yourself as a wanderer? Well, it seems more relevant in my case. Mm. To me, it sounds like a plant with no roots. But these two claim that they know me. 
and that I have a hidden past unknown even to myself. Oh uh, man, are we gonna traumatize this guy? He has to re-remember who he was and what he's done and what he's been through. Like, come on, bruh. Let him live his life, dude. I wouldn't call it the past, but rather... Uh-oh. Uh, this is a difficult one to explain. I don't like to rely on using terms like this often, but in mm. your case, it seems that it ought to be called a uh, previous incarnation. Yeah, previous version of you. Oh, like a past life or something? Yeah. Yes, something far more distant than the past. So far away that you cannot perceive it. History, reality. Okay, I have to ask. What was I like in my previous incarnation? You were a little shit. You were insufferable. You were the absolute worst, my guy. I am the all-knowing guy. Like, you actually sounded cringe, bro. I'm sorry. We could take a trip down memory lane. We have one of those ley lines. We have one of those domains that takes you through the memories of his boss fight. You could just be like, yeah, that was you. Oh, okay. I see. You want to tell me, but you can't bring yourselves to say it. Looks like I didn't have the most wonderful existence in my previous incarnation. We're just trying to think where to start. If it's that difficult to talk about, I have no doubt it will be just as difficult to hear, but I'll be able to handle it. Please, tell me the truth. You can't handle the truth! Is truth something you care a lot about? Uh, I hope so. Yes. Then I'll be straight with you. In your previous incarnation, <laughs> You did many things that would be considered evil. Nahida! <laughs> she... <laughs> no brakes on this train. She was just like, all right, you were actually the scourge of the earth. <laughs> oh my god. You're gonna kill this poor man. <laughs> you nearly died because of what other people did. And many died because of you. As a non-human being, you hated gods and humans alike. You drifted from place to place, never able to settle, even where you found status and identity. You adamantly believed that you were missing a heart. <sighs> He's like, damn, I feel that way even now. Actions rooted in persistence sometimes bear bitter fruit. Mm. Sometimes you have to let parts of yourself go or you'll never be happy. Nahida hit this man with the truth. I gave everything I had but it barely changed history at all. In terms of the outcome alone, that's true. Hmm. But you're not a part of the Fatui Harbingers. They're not trying to find and kill you. You're kind of in a better end game scenario than where you were before. I don't think I can judge everything I've heard purely in terms of right and wrong. Each choice a person makes belongs to a specific place mm. in time, a chain of cause and effect. True. A cycle of karma and consequence. That is the nature of truth. If one thing is right, its opposite must be wrong. And yet, dichotomies like this are not enough to explain the world in all of its complexity. It seems like my previous incarnation wasn't the most likable individual. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but yeah, we weren't your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. We were each other's enemies. If we were enemies, why are you trying to help me find the truth? Yeah, we're not even from this world, so no hard feelings. Uh, this is so frustrating! This guy's supposed to be our arch enemy, but now he's just some random stranger we met on the street! Yeah, and Paimon's like, I need someone to hate out here. He's got so much to answer for, but we can't make him talk because he doesn't remember anything. Uh, what a weird situation. Oh, wait. Does that mean he can't tell us anything about the Harbingers now? Or the sky being fake? Bro. You better remember, dude. That's all I'm saying. Lesser Lord Kusanali, as the God of Wisdom, I trust that everything you told me must be true. Yes, it's all true. Give him that allegory. I can even show you the memories themselves, if you're willing. Yeah, give him that allegory. We need that, we need that memory file, okay? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to freaking learn some new shit. Please, I want to see them for myself. Ooh. I want to experience my own transgressions. Yeah, I was gonna say, because I remember in the trailer, he looks like he's going up against his god version, which was pretty badass. And Dotori even mentions, like, your utility doesn't make you indestructible or whatever. 
Even though it will cause your present self great mental anguish? Ah, I'm just a puppet. With no heart and no name. There is nothing in this world for me to cling to. To fill the void within me. Except maybe these sins that can never be undone. And thus, we're back to square one. But he had to go on this journey to reach the conclusion of it. So even if we go back to square one, it was worth it for the experience. Very well. As you wish. All right. Get ready to catch these L's, my dude. Wait, shouldn't we go with him? This one's kind of on us for bringing him here. Don't worry. Whatever danger I might face, it's my burden to bear. Traveler, could I ask you to supervise him on my behalf? Okay, yeah, yeah, we're the witness, we're the record keeper. Oh, good point. Given your, um, unique situation, <laughs> we'd better keep an eye on you. Understood. All right. <sighs> Thank you. Now, prepare yourselves, everyone. All right, let's get it. Let's get this bread. 